Near-infrared spectroscopy is a great neuroimaging technique for patient groups who aren't able to go for a conventional scan. I can see this being used as a monitoring technique in hospitals for newborn babies who lack oxygen at birth if the umbilical cord is wrapped around their neck. Perhaps you could get the cap on them immediately to determine whether there'll be any severe brain damage. Can you tell us a little bit more about the principle of near-infrared spectroscopy? Near-infrared spectroscopy works by shining infrared light, which is in the range of about 650 to 1,000 nanometers, into the head. And this gets about three centimeters into the head. It goes in kind of a parabola shape, and then it's picked up by a detector on the surface of the head. You can use the change in intensity of this light to work out the concentration of what we call chromophores in the brain. Chromophore just means it changes color um, when it interacts with the light. The equipment I'm using is an array of hexagonal imaging tiles, and these have three sources of light and four detectors on each tile. These are the um, sensors that I put on the face of my phantom, and a phantom is essentially a fake brain. It consists of a box which has the same optical properties as the scalp and the skull, and then I fill that with a mixture of fat and water and then animal blood. I use oxygen gas to fully oxygenate the mixture, and then I add some just baker's yeast. This rapidly deoxygenates the mixture, which essentially simulates a stroke in my phantom. Um, and I can see if my system is picking up that rate of decline of metabolism. Could you talk us through the methodology of how you conduct experiments with participants? The whole principle of it is that you want to monitor your brain and sense differences in activity whilst you're doing different things and then be able to interface with technology. The LUMO actually has tiles which shine light and detect it. I'm using eight of these tiles in my experiment to cover the left side of the metacortex. So I usually end up getting the participants in, put on the cap. After they've done the motor tasks, clenching and unclenching the fist, and then I do the reconstructions. You can often obviously see the motor cortex area having an increased concentration of oxygenated hemoglobin. I'm trying to currently use deep learning algorithms to create an image classifier which can robustly use these images to say whether it's active or baseline. If you can have a 3D image of metabolism, that would be the dream for this technology. I think it's very promising in the idea of creating a good ecosystem for a non-invasive brain-computer interface. With the development of this technology, we can have a deeper understanding without having to actually drill into the brain.